Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Partial Fractions. Now what it means to express a fraction as partial fractions is that we no longer have this product at the bottom. So for example, if I had say uh, x over x plus 1, x plus 2, we've got this product of terms at the bottom, so we might want to write it out as two separate fractions, something over x plus 1 plus something over x plus 2 where we can see that we've got separate fractions with the denominator of each, each thing in this product here. So let's use that to uh, express this thing here in partial fractions. So we've got x plus 8 over x brackets x plus 2. And we're going to write it as something over x plus something, some constant, b over x plus 2. Now what we then do to establish what a and b are, we want to initially multiply through by the x and the x plus 2, so we don't have to worry about fractions anymore. So this is just going to become x plus 8, because we've multiplied through by this whole denominator. Now if we multiply this by x and x plus 2, well multiplying by x gets rid of that over x at the bottom, but then we've still got to multiply by x plus 2, so it would be a x plus 2. And then it's plus b times, well, multiplying this by x plus 2 initially gets rid of the over x plus 2, but we've also got to multiply by x, so it's bx. And actually, this is not an equality, it's actually a identity, so we should really be using this triple equals here. And that means that this has got to always be equal to this for whatever value of x that we actually use. And you may be aware of the idea that if this is an identity, that the coefficients of the x terms have to match on each side, and the coefficients of the constant terms have to match on each side. But there's a variety of different ways of doing it. Um, one way we can do it is just to sub in different values of x, and that will hopefully allow us to see what a and b are. So is there a value of x that we could sub into both sides here that would just say leave either the a or leave the b? Well, if we subbed in 0 as x, then that would completely get rid of this term. So let's try that. If x was 0 then the left-hand side would just be 0 plus 8, which is 8. And then the right-hand side, well, 0 plus 2 is 2, so we get 2a. And that is just wiped out, because 0 times b is 0. And that means we can see that a has got to be equal to 4. Now, what value of x should we choose to wipe out this term instead and get rid of the a, so we're left with the b? Well, what about minus 2? Because then if we had minus 2 plus 2, that would zero out this term. So let's try that. x is minus 2. Now, the left-hand side, minus 2 plus 8 is 6. And then this term is 0 now, because minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And then we've got minus 2b. So, and that means that b is equal to 6 divided by minus 2, which is minus 3. And there we go. We've done this question. We've now worked out that x over x plus 1, x plus 2, is equal to, or identical to, 4 over x plus 1, and then minus 3 over x plus 2. Notice that we've moved that minus out of there to replace that plus there. Now the second one is a bit harder because we've got this repeated factor. Now I'm not going to explain why for the purposes of this video, although I do explain it in my teaching slides, but whenever we have a squared factor, we're going to have to have um, a fraction without the squared and a fraction with the squared. So I'll illustrate. So we're again going to just have a over 1 plus 2x. This should be identical to then we're going to have b over this without the squared. And then you also have another fraction where you do have the squared. But we just do the same thing as before. So we're going to multiply through by this whole denominator here. So on the left-hand side, we're just going to have 2 plus x squared. And then on the right-hand side, well, we're multiplying initially by 1 plus 2x. That gets rid of this. But we're still going to multiply by 1 minus x squared. A 1 minus x squared plus b. Well, timesing by 1 minus x gets rid of that, but we still were times by another 1 minus x and the 1 plus 2 plus x. And then finally, this c here initially gets multiplied by the 1 minus x squared, getting rid of that, and we still need to multiply by the 1 plus 2x. So now we can do a similar thing to before. Let's think of values of x that we can sub in to get rid of either a, b, or c. 
Um, now, if look at this. If we made x1, that zeroes out this. It also zeroes out this as well. So let's do that. x is 1. That gives 2 plus 1 squared is 3. And now that becomes 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0. That is also 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0. And then we've got 1 plus 2 times 1. That's 3c. So that means that c is equal to 1. Uh, what's another value we should try? Well, let's try and make the 1 plus 2x 0 this time. Well, that would happen if x was equal to minus half, because if 1 plus 2x is 0, 2x is minus 1, so x is minus half. So that becomes 2 plus minus half squared, that's 2 plus a quarter, which is 9 quarters. Now we've got 1 minus minus half, which is 3 over 2 squared, is 9 over 4a. That will just be 0 because we're subbing a minus half to that, and that will also be 0. So we've just got this, and that means that a is equal to 1. Now at this point, we've run out of values to sub in to make one of these terms 0. So there's two options here. Um, I'll show you both of these options. One option is to just try another value of x. It doesn't really matter, um, but we may as well just use 0 because that's going to make the substitution the easiest. Um, and that won't zero out all the terms, but it doesn't matter because we've already worked out a and c. So it doesn't matter if we have a mixture of a, b, and c in our equation. So let's do that. 2 plus 0 squared is 2. Now 1 minus 0 is 1 squared, so that's a. We've got 1 plus 0, so 1 times 1 times b, so we've got b. And they've got 1 plus 0 times c is c. So we've got a plus b plus c is 2, but we know that a is 1 and c is 1, so we've got 2 equals 1 plus b plus 1. And that means that actually b is equal to 0. So in fact, this term doesn't even appear. So that means our final answer is this thing here is equal to 1 over 1 plus 2x. Uh, that's just nothing because b is 0, and that's plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. Now, just before we continue with question 3, I want to recap the idea of a top-heavy fraction. Now, I used to, probably from primary school, wherever, uh, the idea of a top-heavy fraction is where the numerator is at least equal to the denominator. So 5 is greater than or equal to 3, so that would be top-heavy. And it's similar with algebraic fractions as well. So we can see here that the highest power in the numerator, which is 2, because it's a quadratic, the highest power here, also known as the order, so the order of this polynomial of 2 is at least the order of the polynomial at the bottom. Well, this is order 1, because the highest power of x is 1. 2 is at least equal to 1, so that's top-heavy. Now, this is also top-heavy, because the order of the top polynomial, which is 1, the highest power, is equal to the order of the bottom polynomial, which is also 1. So that is also top-heavy. And basically, whenever we have a top-heavy fraction and we want to write it in terms of partial fractions like this, we need to note that we have a quotient first. And if you've watched my video on algebraic long division, uh, where you do this division of a top-heavy fraction, we'll see that we have a quotient and then a remainder. Now, there's two ways of doing it, but one is much easier than the other, so I'll just introduce the one way. But what we first do is just imagine doing this long division. Now, I won't do the full long division, but if I write this here, and that's going to be divided by x squared plus 2x, can we see that the quotient is just going to be the 7x squared divided by the x squared is 7, and then we're not going to get anything else in this quotient here, are we? So we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff that goes on here. Um, but we're only really interested in that quotient because we now know that this quotient here, that P, has got to be 7. And as soon as you know that, I would abandon this particular approach and I would just write this, but with the P replaced with 7. The quick way to see it without having to write out this is you, if you look at the highest power term, top and bottom, 7x squared divided by x squared is 7. So that P there will be 7. So now I'm going to write this out again, but with the P replaced with 7. That's plus Q over X plus R over X plus 2. And then we can do exactly what we did for the previous question. So we're just going to multiply everything through by x and x plus 2. So that just becomes 7x squared plus 16x plus 16. Now the 7 gets multiplied by the x and the x plus 2. 
the Q gets multiplied by the X, which gets rid of the over X, and by X plus 2, so it's Q X plus 2, and then plus R with just the X. And again, let's think of values we can sub in. Uh, X is 0 would be a suitable value to sub in because it gets rid of that term and that term. So that gives you 16 on the left-hand side. That is just 0. That will be 2Q, and that will be 0, which means that Q is 8. Then let's sub in next minus 2 to make this 0 and this 0. So this left-hand side, I'll just do it on my calculator, is 12. And that is equal to, well, that is 0, that is 0, and we're just left with this, which is minus 2R which means that r is equal to 12 divided by minus 2, which is minus 6. And there we have it. We know now that this is equal to 7 plus 8 over x minus 6 over x plus 2. Let's just do one more of these using a similar approach. Now again, we can immediately work out what this quotient is. Remember, this is a top-heavy fraction because the power at the top of 2 is exactly equal to the power at the bottom of, of 2 again. So if we do the 2x squared divided by the x squared, we know that's going to give a quotient of 2. So we immediately know that a is 2 by inspection. And let's just write that out. So that's equal to 2 plus b over x minus 1 plus c over x plus 2. So again, we multiply through by the x minus 1 and the x plus 2. So 2 gets multiplied by both. The b is going to be b x plus 2, and the c is going to become c x minus 1. And then we will sub in suitable values, so let's sub in 1, and that's going to become 2 plus 5 minus 10, which is minus 3. That's just going to zero out, that's going to zero out, so we're just left with 1 plus 2, that's 3b, so b is minus 1. And the other value we should sub in, minus 2, to make this zero. So if I use my calculator to just work out this left-hand side, it's minus 12. And that is going to be equal to, well, that is zeroed out, that's zeroed out. We're just left with this, which gives you minus 3c. So that means that c, sorry, not b, is equal to 4. And therefore, we've done it. So we know that this is equal to 2 plus b over x minus 1, which is minus 1 over x minus 1, and then plus c, which is 4 over x plus 2.